Good morning, students. It is Tuesday, September 22nd, and we are going to do day two of our Rise and Fall of the Fire assignment. So yesterday you read this, oh, it's right here, I can't see it. You read this story, and then your task was to, to the best of your ability, fill out this thought diagram. And so um, today we're gonna go over actually the correct answers for it, and don't feel bad if you miss some stuff or it's in the wrong place. Just pause the video and then fill it in so that you can actually have the correct answer on this because this will continue to be part of your notes. So the whole point was for you to try and now we're gonna correct it and the, making those mistakes is part of the way we learn and that's just fine, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen and we're actually gonna type into the digital version that you saw on um, yesterday on Google Classroom and this is not gonna go into the one you did. This is gonna be a separate one I have, but we're gonna type the answers in so you can see um, what we're talking about. Go here and we'll share. All right, so it looks kind of like this for you. We are going to move Mr. Doyle up a little bit. We're going to, I think I can zoom a little bit. Yeah, I can zoom in. All right, so we're gonna start here with the exposition. Now, for some of you, we did this in class. So, you know that it's in that first paragraph and it's Sven Gali is alone on the frozen tundra of Alaska's Yukon territory. And because we need a time period, you could say, in the winter, at night. We have a time and a place. And the exposition, remember, is characters and settings. So we've got a character, Svengali, and we have where he is and when he is. All right, our inciting event. Now, like I said in the video yesterday, it might be good for you to think about what the conflict is. The conflict is that he could freeze to death in the cold tundra, so he needs to build a fire. So the inciting event, what starts the conflict, is when he tries to light the first match. That's where the conflict starts. That's where he gets the ball rolling. That's where the tension builds, because he's just realizing, I need to make a fire. I only have three matches. I try, I try to light the first match. That is our inciting event. And then when we are doing our rising action, that is gonna be like paragraph and paragraph afterward. So I'm gonna move up. Remember, you can stop me at any time because you have a video, but I'm gonna keep going so this video isn't super, super long. So the first thing that happens right after he tries to light the first match, remember he gets scared, he gets startled, so he drops the first match. Now he only has two left. Then he tries to light the second match. doesn't work so well either because the wind blows blew the fire out. So it started to catch but then the wind picked up and it blew the fire out. So the tension is building because each time he loses a match he's more and more stressed out because he's that much closer to freezing to death. Then our final rising action is he tries to light the third match. And as we know, he is successful. And so our climax, the point of highest interest and the kind of the turning point of the story is the fire grew big and bright. That is the most exciting part because the, the problem, the conflict, we're dealing with it now. He was worried about freezing to death, kept losing matches, kept losing matches. And then finally, oh my goodness, he lit a fire. It's warm and it's burning bright, which means he shall survive the night. Um, so our turning point now goes to what happens after he starts the fire, after he gets it going? Well, he cooks a can of beans. Awesome. And then after that, he went to sleep. And then finally, I mean, Falling action can be kind of tough sometimes. There might be, you might have to like really pull out pieces, but another thing that happens, he, he woke up a few times. 
And then finally, the resolution, which is where the characters go back to living their life, the conflict is resolved, is he left camp to continue on his way home to his wife. Ta-da! So, what you're doing when you're doing this is you are just listing out the pieces as they go throughout the story, okay? Um, we are going to talk about any questions you have. You can do that um, via email or Google chat with me. You can also do that in a live session. You have a live session today. Um, so make sure that you're asking those questions if you're not sure. Or if you are a hybrid student, you are coming to me, you know, in class and saying, hey, I wasn't sure about this piece. But my expectation is that you are going through and you are writing the correct answers down in your sheet, okay? Um, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, and tomorrow you're gonna watch a very brief video because tomorrow we're taking our Kertas and you've already taken one in Mr. Plog's class. And so it's not gonna be super difficult. It's gonna be really easy to do, um, but I'm gonna have a video explaining it tomorrow, okay? Way to go on the plot diagram. Remember, it's super important. So if you really don't get certain parts, make sure you ask, okay? Have a great day. Bye.